In this chapter, we're going to learn about cycloalkanes and focus on their stereochemistry, in particular cycloalkane conformations. In this video, we're going to start with an introduction to cycloalkanes and a little bit of information on their properties and naming. Here we have a few examples of some cycloalkanes. This is cyclopropane, cyclobutane, cyclopentane, and cyclohexane. Now for all of these cycloalkanes, the point is going to be a carbon. Each carbon is connected to two other carbons, and then the carbon's also connected to two hydrogens. So here we have two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two hydrogens at each of these, and two hydrogens all the way around here. So what this gives us then as a general formula is CnH2n. Now in comparison, remember that regular alkanes have the general formula CnH2n plus 2, and here we have two fewer hydrogens. And so we need to keep in mind then that a ring is a type of unsaturation. If we were to consider physical properties of cycloalkanes, we need to consider the intermolecular forces. And just like regular alkanes, cycloalkanes will be held to other cycloalkane molecules by dispersion forces. These are nonpolar compounds. They'll be held together by dispersion forces, and so they will have relatively low melting point, relatively low boiling point, and very low water solubility. And if we consider chemical properties, these will also be identical to other alkanes where they don't undergo very many reactions. They will undergo combustion and they will undergo radical halogenation, which we will talk about later this semester. To name cycloalkanes, we have to specify the number of carbons. So this would be prop because we have three carbons. We have the ane ending to specify that there are no double bonds. And so this has the suffix ane, but then we also have to specify that it is a ring. And so we have a prefix cyclo. So this first compound is cyclopropane where this tells us we have a ring with three carbons and only carbon-carbon single bonds. Here we have four carbons, so this is cyclobutane with five carbons, cyclopentane, six carbons, cyclohexane, seven carbons, this is cycloheptane, and with eight carbons we have our stop sign, this is cyclooctane. Notice we have cyclooctane, so it's an OO. Now what if we have a cycloalkane that has branches? So the ring is bigger than the chain, so we will name this as a substituent on the ring. So our base name is cyclohexane, but we have a methyl branch, so this is methyl cyclohexane. Now with alkanes, when we had a branch, we had to specify where on the chain that branch was. So we had to include a number. In the case of cycloalkanes, if there's only one branch, then that branch is automatically at carbon one. So you don't have to specify one methyl cyclohexane because the methyl is automatically at carbon one. So it saves you that huge effort of having to write a one and a hyphen. You're welcome. However, if we have two substituents, then we do have to specify. So this one would be one comma one dash dimethyl cyclohexane. Our next one, we have a methyl group here and a methyl group here. 
we're still going to name it as a cyclohexane, but now we have to specify where both of our alkyl groups are. So we could start here and call this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but then we have our substituents at C1 and C6. If we still started here at 1 and called this 2, so we went clockwise, then we have our substituents at C1 and C2. In this case, it doesn't matter if we start with this one as 1 and call this one 2, or we could call this one 1 and then this one 2. But we do have 1, 2, dimethyl cyclohexane. Now with this example, we have our cyclohexane, and then we have a methyl branch, and we have an ethyl branch. So now it does make a little bit of a difference. So this could be carbon 1, 2, 3. So we have a methyl at carbon 1 and an ethyl at carbon 3. Or we could do 1, 2, 3, so that we have an ethyl at carbon 1 or a methyl at carbon 3. The one thing we can't do is number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because we want to give our substituents the lowest numbers. But in this case, there's kind of a subrule. If either direction gives us the same branch numbers, then the tiebreaker would be to number them the way they're listed alphabetically. So because this is an ethyl group, and this is a methyl group, we would put ethyl before methyl alphabetically. So because everything else is equal, then we're gonna go ahead and give this the one and the three. So this is one dash ethyl dash three dash methyl cyclohexane. What if we have a cycloalkane that we want to name as a branch. If we named this cyclopropane and tried to name this as a branch, that's going to have a really weird name. And besides that, this is really small, this is really big, so we should call this our parent, and then this is a branch. Well, just like we've done in other cases where we had, instead of an alkane, we crossed out the A-N-E and gave it a Y-L ending to go from an alkane to an alkyl group, the same thing's going to happen here. Instead of being cyclopropane, this will be a cyclopropyl branch. So ending with a Y-L. So now if we go back to our overall rules for naming alkanes, we have our longest chain, we number to give our branches the lowest number possible. So here we're going to go left to right, one, two, three, four, eight. And so this compound would be two dash cyclopropyl octane. Two cyclopropyl octane. Now over here, once again, we have the option we could call this our base and then this is a branch, or this is our base and this is a branch. If it's an obvious size difference, then you probably want to go with the biggest thing, but sometimes you can go ahead and do it in a way that's more convenient. Um, so naming this as a cyclohexyl branch is a lot easier than trying to come up with an alkyl group name for this. So if we have one, two, three, four, this is 9, so this would be 4-cyclohexyl nonane. So this tells us that we have a 9-carbon chain. At position 4 of this 9-carbon chain, we have a cyclohexyl group, which means we have a 6-membered ring as a branch off of carbon 4 of a 9-carbon chain. So in general, the naming for cycloalkanes is very similar to the naming for alkanes themselves, except you have to specify that the carbons are in a ring. But the same thing follows whether the ring is the base name with substituents or whether the ring is the substituent and something else is the base.